Give us a bit of insider insight. How has Judge Jackson been preparing for these hearings? Kristen, sources tell us that she's been preparing just like previous Supreme Court nominees before her by participating behind closed doors and so-called, quote, moot court hearings, uh, preparing herself for the question she's likely to face from Re Republicans when she goes before the Senate Judiciary the, a Committee this week uh, for her confirmation hearings. And look, it's just as y'all said, she is making history as the first Supreme Court nominee, black, the first black woman to be nominated to the Supreme Court. Uh, but again, this is not going to be the first time she's faced Congress. She's actually faced Congress three times before this for several jobs, uh, including a uh, the U.S. Sentencing Commission, the D.C. District Court, and the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, we expect Republicans to go tough on her uh, for uh, allegations they've already been floating that she has been soft on crime. And the Republican strategy is expected to be twofold. Questions about Jackson's experience as a judge, as a public defender, her time spent on a federal commission that ultimately slashed drug sentences. And they also plan to uh, pivot to uh, questioning her on the Biden administration policies. But I do want to note, uh, most recently she faced Congress and was confirmed to the D.C. District, excuse me, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals uh, in 2021, and she actually won the support from three Republicans, those Republicans being Senators Susan Collins, Lindsey Graham, and Lisa Murkowski. And even Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell acknowledged this week in an interview with Hugh Hewitt that she's likely going to be confirmed by Democratic support, uh, but he did say likely few Republican votes. Take a listen to what he said Thursday morning in a radio interview. I think Judge Jackson will be treated respectfully. I think the questions will be appropriate. And I think you're right. I think she's highly likely to be confirmed with very few Republican votes because of her philosophy, not anything else. Kristen Boris, if Kataji Brown Jackson is confirmed to the Supreme Court. She will actually follow in the footsteps of previous Supreme Court nominees, now judges Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, John Roberts, by replacing her former boss on the bench, that former boss being, of course, Stephen Breyer. And we do expect this week to be incredibly busy on Capitol Hill as these confirmations begin tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern. Boris, Kristen. Daniela Diaz is live from Capitol Hill. Thank you so much. Let's get some analysis now from Angela Onwachi Willig. She's the dean of Boston University's Law School. She actually penned a letter last month that hundreds of other law deans have signed on to, uh, calling for Judge Jackson to be confirmed quickly. Uh, good morning, Angela, and thank you so much for, for being with us. Uh, just right off the bat, what concerns you might slow down her confirmation? What concerns might slow down her confirmation? I think, well, I think that the questions about um, her sentencing on uh, cases involving non-production child pornography, Senator Josh Howley has sort of said that he plans to ask her questions about those sentences. He plans to ask her questions about her work on her sentencing commission. And I think those kinds of things might slow down. I actually think, I agree with Senator McConnell, uh, she'll get confirmed, but I, I don't think that it will slow it down. But I think that it'll be part of the show of the confirmation hearings. Uh, you know, Republicans are already, of course, expectedly preparing their attacks against uh, the judge. And, you know, notably, if you look at what... Um, uh, what uh, Senator Josh Hawley has suggested, saying essentially that she's overly sympathetic to sex offenders in her judicial rulings. You know, our, our team looked at that and reviewed what he was saying, and it showed that she mostly followed the judicial path, and he, he seemed to have taken some of her comments out of context. Do you think that this is going to present uh, a, a real challenge to her nomination? I absolutely don't think it'll present a real challenge to her nomination. I mean, she was, her, her sentences are completely in the mainstream. Um, actually, less than 30% of all non-production child pornography cases get a sentence that's actually within the sentencing guidelines. 
71% of judges, of federal judges, agree that the sentencing guidelines on those particular types of cases are actually too severe. And so she's absolutely in the mainstream in this regard. So there's nothing that's extraordinary about it at all. If you treat her like all other, if you treat her or you take into account that she's like all other federal judges, there should not, this should not be an issue at all, should not be of concern at all. Uh, and it wasn't of concern. Sorry, excuse Go ahead. me. And it wasn't of concern, you know, three, it wasn't of concern when she was just confirmed less than a year ago. She was just confirmed less than a year ago in June 2021, and um, three Republican senators voted in her favor. There's nothing that's different about Judge Jackson now than there was in June 2021 when they knew she was a top contender for the Supreme Court. And if there was, a, this was a reason to not confirm her, she should not have been confirmed on the D.C. Circuit. And so all of those judges, all of those senators who voted for her then should also be voting for her now. Uh, Angela, I remember speaking to you a, a few months ago before uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson was even nominated, and there were Republicans that had come out and opposed the nomination of a black woman to the Supreme Court uh, just by virtue of them being a black woman. Uh, th there were insinuations about qualifications, et cetera. And I'm wondering if you think she's going to be asked specifically about race and, and whether that informs her judicial philosophy. I think she'll be asked that question as well. And in fact, it's a, it's a, it's a trope that's been posed to many, many black judges, many, many black women judges. She'll be asked that question. We saw Justice Sotomayor face what? similar questions, including, you know, about the comments that she made um, when she gave a speech at Berkeley about being a wise Latina on the bench. And a, a Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson will get similar types of questions. But I think that people should recognize the very thing that Justice Constance, Constance Baker Motley said when she was first asked to recuse herself from a gender discrimination case, which is that, you know, all of us have a race and a gender. All of us have various identity characteristics. All of us are affected by those things. And if you're asking those things from the judges of color only, or the, the women of color only, and you're not asking those of the white candidates, that is basically, you know, dis disparate treatment. You're treating certain kinds of candidates very differently from white, just white candidates for the Supreme Court. And you're assuming that the only people who can be objective and fair and impartial are those who are white. Angela, you probably know better than anybody else uh, here that, you know, black women are very underrepresented on the federal bench. So what does this moment, uh, this nominee mean for, for you, but also for black women in law in general? I, it, it means the world. It's a moment of joy. It is a, an important historical moment. I think it's really important, and, we, and we've seen some of the reasons why it's important. We really need to disrupt this notion of what a Supreme Court justice looks like. And I think part of the reaction to Judge Jackson's nomination is that people have an image of what a Supreme Court justice looks like. And because a black woman has never been a justice, it's hard for some people to even imagine it. Um, and it's really important, I think, for little black girls to be able to look up at the Supreme Court, like and like Justice Ginsburg said, see that it's natural and proper for a black woman to be sitting um, on the on the highest court of the land. And even more so than for for little black girls, it's also important for all of us, for little white boys, for little white girls, for little Asian girls, little Asian boys, for everyone to see that um, that a black woman. Is, uh, is natural and proper on the Supreme Court. We have to disrupt this notion about what a judge or what a justice looks like. She's yet to be confirmed, and already she's setting a terrific example. Uh, Angela Onwachi-Willig, thank you so much for the time, as always. Thank you.